Hello, hi everyone. Pleasure to be with everybody here today. Hi, James. Um, we're excited to dive into this topic, uh, how product and marketing teams collaborate on experimentation to drive growth. It, it's, a, it's a subject that we are deeply interested in, and we think you are too. Um, my name is Colin. I'm leading Chameleon here in North America. I'm joined today by one of my friends and colleagues, James. Hello. Hey, Colin. Uh, it's super um, exciting to be involved with this project with yourself um, and Chameleon. Um, yeah, just I guess quick introduction to myself. So I've spent a large part of my career being really fascinated in what I term the digital intelligence market and uh, specifically around the experimentation practices that large enterprises are, have kind of adopted and it's been interesting to to watch how experimentation has matured over the last decade or so from a kind of a niche nice to have kind of thing to, into the strategic imperatives that drive growth today so um, and a large part of that was during my time leading the research at, at Forrester as a principal analyst there um, nowadays um, I'm an independent growth advisor leading um, uh, working with some of the leading brands and technology firms out there. And also I lead, lead an awesome marketing team uh, at a software company called uh, CreativeX. So that's me, Colin, um, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, for everyone on the call, I just thought it'd be helpful if we took a big step backwards and uh, explained a little bit about you know the research that we are aiming to present to you today. Um, I'm not sure if this, uh, this paradigm looks familiar but you know essentially what we see here at chameleon is we talk to a lot of teams where they say like there's this wall in my company where i work really hard to like uh optimize acquisition funnels to to generate interest and brand awareness and to create leads and demand and once i build the prospects and customers uh, into that funnel and they convert they hand over into product teams and cross this wall or this line in my company and often i never see them again and um that is a that is a story that we hear quite a lot here uh, at chameleon and you know it's a story i think that's a little bit of an old-fashioned one um you know this is something that uh, that we see a long time ago we're speaking in technology so just you know, for the last eight decade but really the world has changed a fair amount um you don't have to live in this world where there's this line and this wall. Um, the world has changed to a point now. What, what we're seeing is that it's less about just marketing-led growth and just trying to stimulate as much demand as you can uh, to taking a more balanced approach to understanding that you can grow with marketing-led growth, but you can also grow with product-led growth. You, and this is an important point um, that we want to try to highlight uh, for everyone on this call today is that you do not need to choose between marketing-led growth and product-led growth. In fact, the world has changed. What we see from these leading companies is that they are combining marketing-led growth and product-led growth. And one of the things that has a strong overlap between these you know, leaders that, that well, work together on both types of growth is that they're relying on experimentation. Um, this experimentation for them is is not necessarily just about you know uh, conversion rate optimization uh, like i said improving those acquisition funnels but really about trying to be uh, as data driven as possible about where they should invest and what sort of business decisions they should take and um, if you look at the these type of companies that are doing this today you'll the names are going to be pretty familiar to you right um these companies that we know about and talk about you know they're organized around how to support growth um overall and often product-led growth or people who have strong um capabilities to affect product um are leading those sort of teams, but they very much are collaborating with marketing. And so this is the story that we've seen at Chameleon for, you know, the last few years. And we just thought it would be helpful to sort of begin to understand it in more uh, nuanced detail. And that's where we invited James uh, with all of his experience and experimentation and research. Uh, we thought it'd be really helpful to like, dig deeper into this trend. And I'm going to hand it over to you, James, to sort of like present what did we, what did we do here and, and what were some of the key takeaways? Yeah, I mean, what did we do is we 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 ran a survey, um, and I think produced um, with you and your team, uh, Colin, some fantastic results. That it's a kind of a one of a kind survey. That certainly, um, I've seen 
as you know research around this before but not specifically on this topic kind of looking at growth and um growth strategies and experimentation certainly not in this way um so the you know the title of the survey is you know the 2023 experimentation of growth survey uh obviously sponsored by chameleon led by myself um with uh you know involvement of, of, of many people at chameleon and others uh what we did is surveyed around 160 managers and above uh in the uk and within the us um you know and, and from from like leading companies and from the graphic you can see that the, the 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 roles that we surveyed were roughly split between product marketing engineering and experimentation and from a, a six verticals for instance um bfsi healthcare media gaming retail e-commerce and software as a service technology companies and what we actually wanted to do was actually, and to your point, Colin, was to see what industry leaders are doing differently from the rest, especially when it came to the experimentation and growth uh, strategies um, around you know, market and product-led growth strategies. So the first thing we really needed to do with this um, the study is to identify these leaders. And we did this by viewing them through two lenses or via you know, two attributes. You know, one is the perception of themselves as industry leaders and their expectation for growth over the last, last uh, 12 months. And what we actually found was that around 20%, one in five of respondents came from industry leading organizations that we identified as organizations that identified as the only one, the one and only leader in their industry as well as they expecting to grow faster than any other organizations in their sector within the, within the next 12 months. So two very um, you know, strong signals that indicate leadership within the, um, the organization. So um, what do we find? Well, I'm going to go into that now, but before uh, we go too much into detail, I want to maybe iterate a little bit what you kind of said, um, Colin, which is, you know, an important outcome of the race to digital transformation over the last couple of decades is the ability of companies to measure and manipulate digital engagement to understand and deliver great experiences. That's what essentially, or one of the outcomes of digital uh, transformation, right? And this has driven huge opportunities for marketers, particularly around their growth strategies as they improve engagement within their brand and their CRO or conversion marketing efforts, right? However, an even bigger benefit factor over the last, let's say, decade has been teams uh, that we now call product teams that deliver digitized engagements within the products and services that, we, that many companies now offer their cu customers. And hence, we've gone through this huge, you know, this kind of era where we've seen the rapid rise of product-led growth strategies, which are now maturing. And these product-led growth strategies now sit alongside these kind of more traditional or longer standing market-led growth strategies in many of these companies, countries, oh, sorry, companies. And what our, our survey shows is that leading companies tend to align, uh, not only have both these strategies in place, but are, are strongly aligned on both of these strategies. As you can see from uh, this, this first uh, kind of result that we show you, right, where we say, that 90% of industry leading organizations have product led and market led strategies that are strongly aligned. And this, uh, you know, uh, contrasts quite significantly where, you know, companies that are leaders or not, not leaders, should I say, and laggards have a 50% or less chance of aligning on their strategies. So, of course, um, you know, a fundamental characteristic of any organization or organizational strategic approach is how these teams work together. Um, and so it's no surprise really that you know, organizations where product and marketing teams are aligned have an 81% chance of growing significantly. So that's kind of parallel kind of result to the previous slide where it says the alignment of the strategies. This is the, actually the alignment of the teams. And you know, organizations um, that are kind of of average success are much less likely to be aligned on their teams, their, their teams as well. So now 
we've uh, now we've looked at the kind of growth strategies of leaders. Let's now look at, have a look at how leaders are investing in experimentation to support this high growth, right? The big hypothesis we had coming into this research was that great aligned experimentation strategies support um, these kind of uh, holistic aligned growth strategies. Our survey clear, clearly shows that experimentation supports both the product and marketing teams with, uh, with the growth approaches. So for instance, product teams benefit from investing in feature experimentation. Um, and if they do, they're almost, uh, you know, they are three times or almost three times uh, more likely to come from high growth organizations, as well as uh, the marketing teams benefit from investing, for instance, in web experimentation. If they do invest in web experimentation, they are over actually around three, three and a half more times likely to come from um, high growth uh, organizations than those uh, that don't um, and, and will be growing significantly in the next 12 months. So investing, uh, so investment in experimentation is critical to the success of both product-led growth and market-led growth strategies, um, you know, particularly in the year ahead. Um, so a few slides back, we reported that there's an 81% chance of a significant organizational uh, growth for organizations where product and marketing growth strategies are aligned. The same alignment story is true actually for experimentation, where we see the alignment of experimentation metrics is critical to business success, at least so say 87% of the respondents. So um, let's talk a little bit more about the approach these leading organizations take to support multi-team alignment on experimentation. We touched on the people and process part of experimentation strategies, but what about the technology part of it, right? So to bring people, in other words, teams together to drive enterprise-wide processes needed for holistic uh, growth approaches requires the right technology approach, such as a single platform approach. Um, you know, our survey shows that around 90% of leading organizations are using one platform to execute and collaborate on experimentation, as well as the maturity of uh, using mature proven technology. And by that, we mean off the shelf technology um, provided by um, great vendors such as Chameleon um, that have the scale capability and stability needed to support sophisticated experimentation programs. And what our um, results showed was that 63% of leading organizations realize that off-the-shelf experimentation products are, are the way to go over and above um, the, 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 the kind of build it themselves. And actually what we find is that there is a great combination of buying um, these sophisticated technologies that we see today uh, and building on top of them as well. So there's this kind of uh, dynamic equilibrium between the two. So um, I want to take a little bit uh, closer look, uh, a closer look at the technology approach. And what we show is, uh, so let's take a look at what the leaders are, are, are saying. And, and what we see is that uh, critical to growth is the existence of a fully integrated platform with the organization. Um, so what does that mean? It means uh, that, um, so what is a fully integrated platform is one that brings together web and feature experimentation within a single platform. It's not only a single platform, but it also has all these integrated features as well. So slightly different nuance, from a nuanced perspective insight from the previous slides. And so we need this fully this full integration of web and feature experimentation and other features to support the needs, the, the needs of all the teams. And what we find is that firms that have a fully integrated platform are 70% more likely to grow in the next 12 months. And this is what our, our, our surveys um, are showing us. Now, um, and I just want to, I want to add touch on that point there and give a little bit of extra context if, if we can, um, uh, James, because what I see is when I talk to these teams is that it's not enough just like, it's one thing to say like, okay, well, we've got a web experimentation solution and we've got a feature experimentation solution and okay, fine. It's great that they're on, you know, an appearance maybe that they're on a, a, a single platform, but often what is happening is that the web experimentation uh, solution has its own KPIs, um, its own events, its own segments, its own, uh, 
team management. And then the feature experimentation has an entirely different data model. And what happens is that it may look like it's uh, an integrated platform, but in reality, there's still this bickering and tension about uh, what data model are you using? What data model am I using? And then that's that benefit of having like a single source of truth is missed. And it just bogs down the experimentation efforts. And that's not what the, uh, I think I just wanted to touch on that point. That's not what we're seeing the leaders do. Um, they know they have a single library for all their events and KPIs and segments. They have a single dashboard where uh, developers and engineers can see these flags and these experiments and, and that marketers can see these over here. But importantly, they're all trusting that they're, uh, that the information that they're using is accurate and not worried about uh, uh, apples to oranges problems, which I think a lot of like immature or laggards suffer from. Yeah, I mean, you 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 got your uh, you you said something that's key there. It's like they share the same data model, the same measurement engine, right? And if you, I mean, just notionally, if you're going to have a, a a marketing and product or you know two teams driving the growth strategy. And that that is a merged or integrated growth strategy, um, you know, driven by experimentation. You need a single um, system of insights and experimentation to really do that. I mean, it's not possible to do it, right? Um, to have two measurements or two experimentation systems um, will essentially drive two different programs, and the, 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 the never the twain shall meet. Well, they can, but it's really difficult. So, yeah, totally, yeah, um, yeah totally get that. So, um, shall I take us to our, our final insight then? Um, you know, uh, yeah. that I, I just wanted to share. Um, you know, it takes us back to the people part of the people, process, and technology discussion, right? Um, and it really brings us to an age old debate of uh, the involvement of technology people such as developers, right? So, you know, I'm kind of old and gnarly enough to kind of remember where developer was king. Um, or, or queen, and she, um, you know, ruled the roost when it came to driving the adoption and enablement of technology. And we've gone through a couple of decades where, you know, the business uh, person is now kind of in the driving seat when it comes to leveraging um, technologies that drive many practices, not least experimentation, right? And we've almost sidelined the developer. We don't want the developer there because uh, she or he slows things down when we want to implement, we want to do stuff, oh, we need to get to the developer. And so, you know, hence the rise of business-friendly, low-code and even no-code technologies. Um, and, you know, Chameleon has, uh, again, with the rest of uh, the experimentation um, community, chase that kind of um that mantra of like we want just this the stuff in the hands of the the people that the operators the business people etc however the, you know to really maximize the ability to innovate and scale experimentation with in enterprises requires at least some involvement um in uh of the developer right why for instance if we're going to integrate a your experimentation platform with your, your, for instance, your engagement systems or your experience delivery system, such as your personalization system, or even your um, uh, your CDP or other data delivery systems, you are going to, and you want to do that in, in ways that perhaps your competitor aren't doing, you need that secret source that the developer can do to kind of do that. As well as you need that, uh, you know, the dev person to customize and tailor capabilities um, you know, processes and outputs that are unique to your own business so that your experimentation is supporting your business processes rather than altering your business processes to the needs of the, the you know, the system itself. Uh, and so that's why uh, experimentation uh, is important. And, and, you know, hence it's no surprising that leading organizations rely heavily on developers when supporting their holistic strategies with experimentation. You know, this insight that we see here uh, from the survey uh, shows that 59% of leaders uh, see developers as critical to experimentation. And that's about you know, one and a half times more likely than the non-leaders. So I thought that was a really interesting kind of final insight, Colin, uh, from, from this, this research. And so I'm going to take a breath now. And, and maybe did you want to summarize uh, some key takeaways? Yeah. You know, but I do want to stay on this point because I think it's so important for everybody. Um, you know, 
the bottom line is that if you're going to be optimizing the product, you're going to be working in the back end. Um, you're going to be uh, working with full stack developers and engineers. So it's, you know, if you want to be a part of this trend of uh, taking marketing led growth and product led growth and, and collaborating to become a leader in your category, you just have to have uh, engineering support. Um, but what we see is that it's not this zero sum game where it's like, okay, if engineers have to be involved, then everything uh, when it comes to experimentation needs to be engineering heavy. Do you need engineers to of code back end experiences? Absolutely. Like you're, no one's going to, you know, uh, no one's going to tweak the algorithms or you know, build the uh, on the back end um, without an engineer. But does that engineer actually need to be involved in like allocating how much traffic your experiment gets or choosing the KPIs that are going to be used to measure the experiment? Does the developer need to be part of, um, you know, the Pick, you know, picking out the targeting and the segments. No, this can all be handed off to somebody that may be dedicated to experimentation. Uh, it could be the product manager that knows the, uh, their segments uh, much better. So I just want to highlight there's uh, a nuance to that point. Developers absolutely need to be involved um, to be able to reap the benefits of experimentation, but they don't necessarily have to be involved in every single step of the experimentation launch. And, that, yeah. and that's... And then, yeah, and I think that's just a key point everybody should hear. Yeah, I know. It's, you know, if you try and, uh, you know, there's different ways of like compressing that into a summary point. But the way that I th thought that comes to mind is that, you know, developers are really important to create innovation and integration and make it relevant to your organization to kind of create that differentiation. And then they need to kind of take a step back as they've created this enabled feature, these integrations, and let the operations and business people scale it, right? Uh, and to scale those uh, experimentations. Yeah. So there's this exactly. kind of dynamic. Yeah, and I think that's the real sauce of success is that when you look at those leaders again, and you know, I can kind of pivot over to uh, some of the key takeaways because I always just like to think, like, how, what do I do here? I, I want a roadmap. Give me the takeaways. Um, but you know, before I, you know, before I dive into this list, I just want to highlight the one big thing that uh, you know seems apparent, um, but it's important to like uh, continue raising is that. Um, these teams that are aligned, they're relying on a common set of metrics um, that, and they use those metrics to like build these flywheels. And you can see that as what these leaders are doing. So um, to kind of get into that more uh, detail, they do not choose between marketing-led growth and product-led growth. They go on both. Um, I think that's very important. Um, if you're going to pursue both methods, then you have to, again, understand experimentation is a, an engine of growth for marketing-led growth and product-led growth. Um, and therefore, you're going to have to give the marketing side classic web experimentation. James, it speaks to that, like no code, no tech, you know, like, uh, non-technical teams being able to like uh, easily optimize UX um, and messaging um, to help you know optimize their acquisition funnels. But you're going to have to give the product and engineering teams uh, the ability to gate features with a flag, control release, control rollouts, roll out, roll back um, easily. But what's so important is that flywheel point here, which is that these teams that understand, okay, well, look, wow, when this particular uh, cohort of users um, really is sticky. We see great engagement, a lot of retention from them. How can we get more of these type of users? That information is fed back into the marketing-led growth teams or the marketing teams, and then they use that information to build more refined campaigns. So essentially, uh, they're optimizing their funnels uh, so that the, they can deliver more of the types of customers that the product team knows, love, and will adopt their product. And again, you can see that benefit, that flywheel just like feeds itself uh, again and again and again. Um, yeah, and, and you know, I, I thought you said it really well. So when you look at laggards, what they, what I commonly see is that, they're, you know, I can't tell you how many times we, you know, talk, called a day with somebody complaining about in-house and built in-house technology that is super old. Nobody likes it and wish they had never done it to begin with. Um, but again, it, it's, there's more nuance to this where, you shouldn't uh, 
just go off and say like, I'm going to build a, a, a robust unified uh, experimentation platform uh, from the, from scratch. That's a, a very hard thing to do. And, but you, you don't have to say to yourself, like, I'm never going to try to like um, integrate something that's off the shelf with my uh, tech stack. Uh, I can, you can have both essentially today, which I think is really important. Yeah. We that's a, fund about, that's you know, a fundamental, a yeah, the, uh, Colin, that's a fundamental shift I've seen literally in the last, like three to five years, right? That kind of this sophisticated hybrid approaches, only because it's been supported by you know Chameleon and similar types of technologies that have been able to do that, right? So, yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I mean, again, you can have it both today, which is like, super exciting. Pursue pursue PLG and MLG, pursue in-house and uh, sorry, off-the-shelf technology, and then build customized stuff on top of that. Um, and then we already talked a lot about engineers, so I think that points. Yeah, just welcome, so, welcome your engineers. Don't be, you know, be kind to your engineers because you you can work together definitely. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, so you can invite them into the process by giving them the tools and the methodologies that they want, but you can simultaneously guard how much of their time needs to be in experimentation by being thoughtful about the solutions you're working with. Because again, not all solutions need to be so dead heavy. Um, so, you know, everyone on the call, uh, obviously, we have a big stake in this. Uh, it was important for us to, to see this research and it really kind of confirmed the vision that we had for Chameleon, which is that, hold on, to be successful today, you have to have a single platform that's going to work for all type teams and all types of teams. Um, you have to make sure that you're giving all the solutions that those teams are looking for. You know, do they, does marketing need a WYSIWYG? Absolutely. Does product? No, they don't. Does engineering? No, they they need feature flagging and feature experimentation. Um, and then, you know, each one of those teams is going to require, uh, that we work very well with their preferred analytics tool or their preferred CDP or whatever kind of, uh, third party martech that's important to that team to make sure that they feel like they're getting roi from experimentation from we have to integrate with so yeah uh, i just wanted to thank you for the this research and uh because it again confirmed the sort of path and the vision that we have for experimentation yeah it's been fun huge fun i love it uh for everybody on the call um we just touched on some of the key takeaways from this report. Um, it's really interesting. If anyone uh, is really struggling to communicate uh, to senior management about how experimentation needs to flourish outside of whether it's marketing or in product um, and how it needs to come together so that you can become one of the leaders that we've uh, highlighted here, I really encourage you to have a close look at the, the research. You, you'll see the, the full report there. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.